Hi, my name is Marissa Getman, and welcome to South Metro Fire, and this is a day in the life of an engineer. Metro Fire, what is the address of the emergency? What's on fire? Uh, Calls reporting flames coming from the roof. LPDs arriving on scene, stating fire in the stairwells as well. Callers, the flames seen coming out of the unit. Hustle parties trapped. If there's an older lady that lives there, she is in that scene. Right, medium size, two story multi family. We have a uh, smoke and flame strike. Alpha side. I'll be assuming command. Remain the offensive strategy. We do have extension to the second floor. Headed to the third. Let's go ahead and start a second alarm. 334, now we're Probably the best way to set up my day for the rest of uh, my set would be to come in and make sure that everything is where it's supposed to be. Probably 90% of what I do on a daily basis is drive. Um, but behind the scenes, it's so much more than that. It is um, making sure that the components on the engine are working appropriately. And the, the biggest job is structure fires and making sure that the guys who are inside the structure are getting the appropriate amount of water and what they need. There's nothing worse than getting on a call and either expecting something to be there and have it not be there or have it be there and have it not working appropriately. So um, kind of one of the things that we do um, on a um, set basis is every time we come in, we do just a quick handoff. Um, Chris gave me one this morning, let me know kind of um, if anything's wrong with the rig. Um, if there is, I know kind of have an idea of, as to what I want to look for. And then as well as anything that he's repaired, um, anything that they used, that way I kind of have a good idea as to what things I kind of need to double check. Um, like he said, he pulled the hose off yesterday for some rookie training. Um, I want to go through and not that I don't trust Chris, I just want to make sure that it's back where it's supposed to be. It's loaded appropriately so that when we go to pull it on a, a fire or we pull a medical kit, anything like that, um, I know what's been used before um, and I have kind of something to, in my mind to expect as to how it should be set up for the most part. Batteries all done, Marissa. Thank you. Yeah, of course. I feel like the engine check is probably the biggest thing that you can do. Um, the engine has so many components and so many parts and pieces to it. So um, being the engineer on the engine, it's really my job to make sure that we come in and that everything is set up the way that my crew expect it, expects it to be set up. Come in, I'll get my seat set up. Um, I'm gonna catch some of my lights. And I'm super short, so I always have to adjust the seat. Okay. Make sure that everything on my panel is set up the way that I like it. Um, the only engine brakes on, and I'm familiar with all my buttons and everything else uh, that my screen's working, and then just kind of quick overall, just remind over all my buttons and everything. Um, and then once my switch is on, I'll come back and I'll just do a quick check of my pump panel. So, um, some guys like to have this stuff set up in a certain manner. Um, I typically like to start with everything closed. So just make sure that my tank to pump is closed, uh, my tank fill is closed, and then everything else is uh, closed up. My water level is good, my foam is good. Um, I have green lights on both of those. And then typically what I'll do is make sure that just my uh, my main intakes are open, all of my drains are um, nice and empty, and with no water in them. And then I'll typically catch these right here as well. Just a quick open close on my pump, and then side one there. So now that I've kind of had that checked, um, I'm pretty good with my um, my pump panel set up. I'll just do a quick reminder of what all my pressures are um, and then uh, go down and shut my battery off. So um, now from here, since all my drains are good to go, close everything up and then this is kind of just a personal thing for me. I'll kind of go through and just make sure that all my caps are loose, that there's no water in any of my discharges. So I'll kick them open, make sure that they're dry. Um, this is usually pretty important on super cold days. Um, if they're wet, uh, they have a tendency to freeze. So you usually tend to kind of go through a little bit longer, especially in the winter time, to make sure that they're all dry.
pump check is extremely important. If we pull up to a, a structure fire and I didn't check my pump and for some reason uh, the engineer before me had maybe used some water and now I don't have a full tank of water, um, now that puts me behind the eight ball and it actually um, the, the call, it usually ends up going down the tube super quick because now I'm behind. No coughs or anything? No. So that's part of the reason I want to do that IV. Sorry, it's a little cold out. Are you able to raise up that left arm? I base a lot of my stuff off of what I feel like I'm going to be doing, so. Most of my workouts here at work are typically CrossFit. And then I'll kind of pair those up with, um, we like to call them prison, prison workouts. Um, just staring in the mirror and kind of doing some good, um, some good muscle activation with, uh, with weights and stuff. So I feel like getting your heart rate up and kind of pairing that with uh, um, heavier weights um, and functional movements is extremely beneficial for any kinds of calls that we run, most especially structured fires. Um, everything is heavy, everything's awkward. And I feel like a lot of um, this kind of a workout kind of keeps me, both my lungs exercised and ready for any of that kind of hard work of breathing, especially with the SCBA on. Um, you're, you're working to breathe when you're wearing those types of apparatuses. And so um, I feel like when you pair it together with a workout where you have that high intensity, um, 170, 180 beats a minute kind of a, a workout, um, you're kind of helping uh, that portion, putting those two together to, uh, to really make um, structure fires and any of those big, heavy, long calls so much easier. Yeah. Gotta go, man.
Max out at about 41. You want to stick it out here and see if it's yeah. actually higher out here before I fully ventilate it? We catch a call and have to basically drop everything that we do um, to go kind of take care of it and come back and we kind of just come back and kind of pick up we know where we left off. You may need to like flip it. Yeah. Um, I never thought I would see myself in a um, career where I leave home for two days. Um, I come and I hang out and um, work with people that I don't know and then go back home and, and do other family things. So it's like basically having two families. Um, I went home and, and went at work. to engine 42 for a few hours um, while uh, the crew at 31s who is uh, they're all doing dive training this morning um, I'm not currently dirt dive certified so they grabbed the dive rig and headed out to Chatville to do some ice training um, the engineer who is typically here at 42s um, is on the dive team so him and I swapped seats and um, I drove for him while he was at training sometimes during uh, shift we'll have some uh, not so much downtime but We'll have an opportunity where we're not running calls that we can actually set up kind of our own training. And a lot of times what guys would like to do is pick a certain um, apartment complex or structure or open parking lot where we can go and pull hose and practice hose and kind of work on some different variations of what can work, what doesn't work, and what would work in different situations. And so that's what we did today. Back on engine 42, we're on scene of a medium sized three story multifamily structure. We have a working fire on the
it. Cross this far side. That's good. Let me know when you want water. Ready? Water's coming. It's a lot of um, coordination. It's a lot of things that all happen at once. And if you don't know that they're happening, it looks like a very simple system. When you know the details of what all has to happen in order for those guys on the end of the nozzle to get their water to put out some fire, um, there's a lot of things that kind of that kind of go into it. And so um, it's all kind of based on time. So a lot of my job on those trainings is it's seven minutes of hectic running around like your hair's on fire, and then things slow down, and then you can kind of settle in and kind of dial things in and uh, kind of just just watch from uh, the cheap seats actually. So. What is it like uh, driving emergent? I love it. It's really hard to get my personal car when I go home. <laughs> it's definitely different. A lot of what I do is defensive driving probably times 10 or times 15 is watching every moving vehicle as they're kind of coming through to make sure that um, you know that they see me and you would think with lights and sirens and horns and everything that they would see you and it's amazing how many times that they don't. I want you to relax your arm, okay? Mm -hmm. All right, big poke. One, two, three. Uh. Those people who are wanting to get into the fire service and have maybe tried once and said it wasn't for them, um, try and try and try again. If that's what you know that you want to do, um, keep working, keep getting information, uh, do ride alongs, find out how you can make yourself better and get really good at selling yourself. Uh, so many people I've seen come into the fire service who want to do well, don't know how to sell themselves. And one of the best pieces of advice, of advice I ever got was from a firefighter I worked with up in uh, Fed Heights. And I was kind of at that point where I was, I was testing a lot, I was getting frustrated, and I was like, man, I'm taking all these tests, and I'm just, I keep getting to you know the interview process, and I'm just not doing it. She's like, you're not selling yourself. You don't know how to sell who you are. And so we sat down, and we went through this, this massive piece of paper about what my history was and what what kinds of gems I learned from each job I had ever done that could somehow relate to the fire service, whether it was um, you know delivering boxes from FedEx and how to read a map and how to use the mapping system or the streets or you know my farm work and, and so she was picking all of these things together and she put it on this this legal pad and she had it all kind of printed out for me and I remember looking at it going. I had no idea I had that many skills. And she's like, you have so many. 
right? And so she's, she's looking at me and she's like, you have no idea what you have, you just don't know how to sell it. And it was literally the next couple testing processes right after that. I started to go further and further and further in a lot of those testing processes. So if it's something that you want to do, learn how to sell who you are. I don't need to know what certifications you have. You have a resume that tells me all the information. Tell me who you are and why you're good for this position.